So I'll start by maybe just picking up from your introduction where you made it sound like there was um, a kind of urgency for this film. Like, you know, because there are some films you, you say you, you want to make and some films you have to make. Yeah. And this one you had to make. Yeah, I, um, I, I, I um, well, my, my father had this disease and he was still alive when I wrote the film, but I felt he was not going to be here forever. So that was that was that me trying to I guess uh, feel his presence a little bit longer but it was also um it was not only about that though it was also um that I had also made a I mean the film is also about a new birth a new a new love a new a, a passion and it's about this opposite feelings and that is some something that I've experienced and I thought it was a beautiful experience actually and I wanted to try and, and capture that and I felt that if I don't do it right now at this moment I wouldn't find I mean I would lose um, that the, the, the equity the, the, I, I wouldn't know how to find the, the, the exact feelings again and I, and I really wanted to capture something that I was worried would would vanish. Can you actually talk about that idea of, of, you know, these two strands in the film, this this coming to terms with the father's decline and also the new love story, and how have you approached writing that together? I mean, I think it's I, I think the film derives its power from the the coexistence of these two things, but I'm wondering about the process of 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 writing these two, you know, these two these two narrative arcs. Well, it was. Um, one of these moment, these moments, the, where I start to want to make a film, also, or to, to feel that there is a film here that I should do, because of the emotions that uh, that haunt me, but also because I have a feeling, and maybe it's an illusion, but it's it, that illusion helps me move on. I have a feeling that no one told that story, and in that case. It was the fact that it was two stories, you know, but two stories that actually belong together because they communicate secretly, not that, I mean, the script doesn't try to artificially make, you know, um, bridges between the two things, but they are still, uh, to me, they are uh, secretly uh, connected because I think part of why uh, Sandra um, one needs to leave that passion has to do with the desire, the need of feeling alive. So, but I had the feeling when I started writing this that uh, most of the films were maybe telling one story or the other, but, the, but that maybe the singularity of what I had to tell was the fact that it was actually happening at the same time. And so the whole process of writing, I think, had to do with with finding the right balance between the two, these two uh, strands, as you said, but without ever creating, I, 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 it was very clear for me from the start that I would not try to create artificially um, connection in this, to dramatize this. It was just two things that were happening in the same time within uh, the character's uh, life. You talked about you know the starting point being your father's condition, and I think uh, Mia was doing a talk earlier today, maybe some people were there, and you talked a little bit about how your work has always been, despite, regardless of what you say, it's always been read or perceived as autobiographical, and having a certain, or emerging from, like, a, a um, you know, personal connection. It sounds like this was, the, the that is, was quite strong in this film. It was but maybe more frontal. Yeah. I think it, it Sorry. Yeah, sorry. That was exactly the word. I think, like more, just a more directly. And I'm wondering about that that process. If if you're dealing with it more frontally, th then how does how does distance come into it? Because distance is always, you know, I think necessary, right? When you're when you're creating, constructing. I think actually distance, getting the distance, is somehow the goal of mm. writing it. It's maybe I don't have any distance when I write it. Maybe it's very. Especially with that film, indeed, yes, it's true that many of my films have been said to be autobiographical, and they were not always or not that directly, directly autobiographical. But that one, yes, maybe is more than any of my other films. Uh, but then, I actually, 
I, I don't, f I, I'm not sure I had any distance, to be honest, when I started writing it, but I think, in a way, why I make the film, it's to, get. It, to get it. And now I have more, or a little bit more, maybe, than what I about, used to. What about the shooting and the editing? Is that like an intermediate step to... Um, well, the... the, the uh, well, as, as soon as there is actors involved, mm -hmm. and, th and that's also the old point of making films to me and what I enjoy so mu much uh, about making films is that actors bring fiction immediately. And at the end, I mean, I, I keep talking about how much or autobiographical my films are, but at the end, what I enjoy really about making, about making them is, 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 is uh, transforming my experience into a fiction that anybody hopefully can connect with and I think that happens only thanks to uh, the actors and what they bring and, and their presence and they always bring the film somewhere yep. somewhere else. I mean whether you want it or not because they have their own background, their own history, their own presence and even if they can be very look very similar sometimes with people who, who who you've known in this film in particular, Pascal Grégory, who plays the father, looks uh, um, to me very um, close to my father when he was uh, sick, but still they bring something else and that's, that's what makes sense at the end and that's why I enjoy about it, it's the, the distance that, that the fiction brings and that allows me to um, um, get free mm -hmm. from that story actually. You mentioned the actors, and so maybe you can say a little bit about uh, casting. I, I think you have, um, uh, you know, you've worked with actors across the board, like from relative newcomers to like legendary actors in, in your films, and I think you have a real gift for, for casting, often because they're unexpected. And I think Leia Seydoux in this film especially seems to be, it's a different kind of role than we've seen her in certainly recently. So I'm wondering if you can talk about some of the choices. Yeah, I, I wrote the film with her in mind, just the, just as I wrote Things to Come with Isabelle Huppert in mind. Like from the very start, I thought of her. Um, I had seen her in many, many of the films she had been, and I, I thought she was an incredible actress. Um, I, I guess I wanted to work with her, but I think one thing that I was interested in uh, while I, uh, when I gave her the script, um, or I thought that, I mean, I thought... Uh, that she could be seen in a different way in that film. Maybe it's not the kind of performance that... I mean, maybe you've seen her in films where she's more impressive in terms of performance, where um, she does... I mean, I, I, I think she's been extraordinary in some of the films uh, where she was, but, but here it was more about simplicity. She has a part here where she's more, more like down-to-earth, more real in a way, and it's really about her looking at people. Instead, she's been a lot looked at by mm, men, directors, <laughs> and, and, and as an object of desire. It's a lot like how she's been looked at, and it was very different here because she was like my alter ego, and it was her listening to, yeah. to her father, to looking at a, a, a man she desires. So it's a very uh, listening to my grandmother who plays in the film. You know, it's, a, it's very different and I thought maybe that's, that will allow the public to see her in a different, very different, uh, in a simple role, but very different from, from anything that she's been in actually. And I enjoyed, and, and I really enjoyed filming her in, the, in, in that part. Yeah. Um, I think the occupations of your characters are always significant and interesting. So if you can say a little bit about, you know, your decision to make Sandra a translator? <laughs> well, I, 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 uh, I think I always give um, jobs to the characters of my film that I, I, I would want to do myself. <laughs> 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 like, I, 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 I really look at this as a kind of handicap in terms of a script writing, that I, c I cannot uh, have them uh, do something that I wouldn't like to do. And uh, I guess if I, uh, and each time I think it's the question I ask myself is if I wasn't a director, a uh, scriptwriter, what could I do? And, you know, maybe it's one of the things that I would have liked to do. My father also was a translator, so maybe it's some kind of a tribute to him also. And it, it was, to me, that job uh, that she would be an interpreter was also 
like in the continuity of all the rest that she's doing, that she keeps listening yeah. <laughs> to other people and she's very restrained, you know, and that made sense to me. I'm just gonna ask one more and then maybe we'll take a couple of audience questions. Um, something you said in the talk that struck me, uh, I wrote it down, <laughs> was you, saw, you said that um, for you, fiction is about creating a rhythm, um, a rhythm from the chaos of life. And I like the idea of fiction as rhythm. And I wonder if you can elaborate on that because I, I think of your films often in terms of, in those ther terms, in terms of how the films move. Well, yes, I mean, even though my films doesn't try to, don't, my films don't try to be, you know, uh, entertaining in a maybe more <laughs> conventional uh, definition of it or don't follow some of the rules that people think are very important for the scripts and, I think it's a very, imp we could say, imp impressionist, impressionist, right? R uh, impressionistic uh, 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 way of writing, the, the, the way I, I write. But still, I mean, I, I, I do think rhythm is, is very much in the heart of it, and, and the question of, of the rhythm um, is, is totally uh, crucial uh, to me. But maybe I have my own definition of a rhythm, and, and, and yes, it has to do with, with uh, the trying, the, my quest for um, for meaning um, uh, I, I I think just another way to put it would would be to say that I'm trying to find the right frame mm -hmm. and I think and and that tells you about how how big the difference is actually between life and and and, and a film, because people say, oh, your film is autobiographical because, because it's inspired by your father or by, by your love life or whatever. But at the end, I mean, the life is so chaotic and multiple and, and only to decide what you're gonna tell or not tell, what you will show or not show, keep in the shadow. That, that's thousand, that means an infinity of choices and you exclude something, you choose, some, you know, and. And at the end, that's what I call give a rhythm to the chaos. It actually, you think it's the reality as it is, but it's not. It's always a reinvention of reality. That's what I mean. Great. All right, we have time for maybe one or two audience questions. So if you're, yep, at the back? back. Yeah. You know, actually, what's funny is, is that I, I didn't realize that I filmed, that I was filming people walking in film so much until I was told. <laughs> and now I make it into something like that I decided, but actually it's just the way I write without, I wasn't aware. I think it has to do, so yes, it's in the scripts already, but I think it has to do with the fact that all my films are actually portraits, portraits of a character, portraits of a woman. Sometimes it's a portrait of, of a man. It's, it, it was not always a woman, but here it's a portrait of a woman and of her father maybe, but it's mostly a portrait of her. And I think in my idea of what a portrait, a cinematic, cinematographic portrait is, I need to see her walking. I need to see how she moves. I need to see in which, which pace. Uh, uh, how she looks like, how she carries her bag, like how she opens a door, all, all these things that, well, if you read it from a very, you know, um, classical point of view of what is really us uh, useful in a script, you could say, well, let's just take it away, we don't need that, it doesn't help the story to progress. But actually, to me, it is important because uh, that's part of, you know, her presence. And if I want to capture the presence of that person, I need to see how she walks through the streets of Paris. I think we had a question in the front. Yeah, over there. Well, first, thank you for mentioning your missing Paris and, and finding it in the film. I'm always surprised when somebody tells me this because what you see of Paris in that film is mostly like hospitals and <laughs> nursing homes. <laughs> I, I would not think that it's so attractive and it's always like a nice surprise to hear that. Um, and about the endings, I, I think there's two ways for me to answer that because there is the, I could answer very specifically about the actual moment, the actual second where I end the film, which is when 
Melville Poupeau, Clément in the film, make that gesture, and that's something that wasn't planned. It just, it just did it while I was shooting, and when I was editing, I thought it was beautiful, and I just wanted, I thought, oh, this is the right moment to end the film. But apart from that, the, the scene in general, the last scene of the film, I, and that's, that's very often the case for me. I had it from the start in mind. I mean, I think the very idea of the film I had when I had the idea of that last scene, it's when I, I actually experienced the scene, this moment where I went, I went to see my father where he was and he actually, I filmed the, actual, uh, the, the real place where my father was. This, so the last hospital you see is, is a place I know very well, and so I, I, ha I had, I've, I've lived that scene, but uh, that's, and that was a very sad moment because it made me feel extremely guilty that I was leaving him once again. He, I, I felt like I was a, a abandoning him, but at, at the same time, it was as you see in the film, it was a happy moment too, and that's there was everything was there that that complexity of feelings. Uh, this paradox, you know, of being extremely sad and very happy at the same time. And I think, but there was light, there was some happiness. And I think that's the moment that um, I thought I can make that film because I would not have been able to make that film if it had been only to deal with the tragedy of life. And because there was light here, because there was also something that opens, you know, that's, that's when I saw a film. I'm afraid we're out of time, but uh, I want to thank you all for coming. And Mia, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.